Hey there, ladies and gentlemen, it's Roger Burnett here, coming to you from the Social Good Promotions studio, and I am here to make a bit of an announcement. Today, May 25th, 2022, will be the final episode of the So You're In Sales podcast. That's right. We are moving on to a new podcast that I'll tell you about here in a little bit. But before we let you go, I really thought it would be fun for me to capture some of the memories that have occurred in the five years that I have put on this show. And unlike most other times where I just talk off the top of my head, I'm going to actually kind of read a little bit because I want to make sure that I get all of this down because it's important for me and hopefully for you to have a little bit of an understanding about where I'm going and why I'm making this choice. And I'm hoping by virtue of this uh, plea that maybe you'll follow me on to the new thing because there's a reason behind why I want to make this move and I want to share it with all of you. This has been a long time coming, really. I remember back around episode 94 of the show, which would have been around February of 2021, I was having a conversation with my good buddy, Bill Petrie, and we were talking about all of the different things that we do from a content perspective and all of the demands that it puts on our time and weighing whether or not the value that you get in return is worth the effort. And I shared with Bill that maybe I was not feeling the joy around producing this podcast that I had been experiencing in the past and the effort that's required to produce a quality piece of content is pretty sizable. So if it's not bringing you joy in the work, that could be a real challenge for a content creator. And I was mired in the midst of that. And I was really struggling with what was it that I was feeling that was making so that I wasn't having the joy that I originally um, was experiencing. And there was a flashpoint when Jay Akunzo actually came on the show. Uh, it was episode 94. And Jay, for those of you who don't know him, he his claim to fame is kind of he's the podcast whisperer kind of guy. And he offered to come on the show and in the process of me getting him on as a guest, he said, hey, why don't I offer you some constructive criticism on the So You're in Sales podcast as part of my episode? Holy crap. I'm going to let like the guy who critiques podcasts critique my podcast, not only critique it, but do it to my face. And then I'm going to put it out to all of my listeners about what he may say about my program. Holy cow, I didn't sleep. I didn't sleep the entire night before, and it wasn't really that I was worried so much about what Jay was going to say, as I would do in almost every instance like that. I was in heavy self-analysis and self-reflection, trying to think what could be the things that Jay might point out to me that could be areas of improvement for my show. I was thinking about production value, about the length of the episodes, you know, really kind of trying to get under the covers, you will, of the mechanics of what it was I was doing so that I could kind of be ready for whatever anvil it may have been swinging towards me as a result of what Jay was going to say. And um, I was really kind of scared, truth be told, and I didn't know what it was that I could anticipate. So uh, his advice was super insightful. Uh, he actually complimented me for the preparedness of the show and that he said I asked really good questions and that he felt like my skill as an interviewer came from this natural curiosity that I had and the degree of preparation for which I was willing to put in in order to make for a really compelling discussion. His critique, however, was that maybe our my format was in need of tweaking because he uh, presented an exercise to me and he wanted me to see if I could put myself through that exercise in a way that would make the show's context hold up in comparison 
to other podcasts because what you and I and the entire world know is there are tons of podcasts. So what makes mine special? And the, so uh, the exercise went a little something like this. He, he said, so my show is called the So You're in Sales podcast, which is a show about having a career in sales. That's fine. Here's where it really kind of tripped me up. He said, but unlike other shows about sales, our show focuses specifically on one key aspect. Our show didn't do that. A show, a show doesn't do that. And it's too broad of a topic to really be niche enough to be interesting to enough people to grow my listenership in the way that's really deserving of the effort that I was putting into it. And man, that's totally spot on. I totally, he was so right. And I knew it. And as I was sharing this with Bill, you know, I was already sort of wrestling with what it was that I should do about what I had just been told. And it really hadn't revealed itself yet to me. And I'm stubborn and I'm slow to evolve. So even when it's clear to me that it's time to change, you know, I, I find myself sort of waiting for the right motivation, for the right inspiration, for the proper stimulus for me to feel like it's time to actually make that move. And uh, I put in 30 more episodes of this show, 30 plus, trying to figure out what it was that was going to be the reasoning behind why I was going to make this choice. So what was my motivation, you ask? Well, that's a good question. So 2022 means we're back to in-person events, which is super fun. And as a distributor in the promotional marketing industry, it's great to see people back doing that kind of stuff because that means that more promotional products are being purchased. Yay us. So in the course of the last few weeks, I've attended a few events, the first being Cause Camp. I was in Grand Rapids. Oh my gosh, what an amazing event. So Cause Camp is put on by the folks at Do More Good Michigan. And they're also behind uh, the Nonprofit Hub. So this is a, mark, a conference for nonprofit marketers. And we've sponsored that event dating all the way back to when we first uh, went into business in 2019. We've had a great relationship with that organization. Shout out to Katie and Bill and Kira and Kara and everybody over there at Do More Good. Cause Camp was an excellent event. I really enjoy participating in that because it gives me an opportunity to talk to people in marketing roles for nonprofits and hear about their challenges and the ways that they are working creatively to try to get the message out about the mission and the great work that those organizations are doing for the communities that they serve. We use the information that we gain during that event to help fuel both our support efforts for those nonprofits who come to us for promotional marketing items, but maybe even more importantly for the pro bono marketing services work that Social Good Promotions does annually as part of our give back uh, mission of making sure that we are helping the nonprofits in our community we serve do the best possible job of getting the message out about that which we do that that which they do it's incredibly important for us that we uh, dedicate time energy and resources to that effort and Cost Camp gives me all kinds of amazing opportunity to really dig in and understand the challenges from a first person perspective. So I'm always super gratified to attend that event. This year, one of the speakers that interestingly was kind of a last minute speaker was none other than Dalvin Salvagno, who is the co-founder or founder of Purpose Point. And I had the opportunity to speak with him during Cost Camp. And we had opportunity to meet once before, but unfortunately COVID prevented that from occurring. So this was a bit of serendipity because it gave me the opportunity to get the chance to talk to Davin when I hadn't had that opportunity in the past because of what happened during the pandemic. So after I spent some time sharing with him Social Good Promotions mission and what it is that we tried to do to make the world a better place, he mentioned to me, uh, the Purpose Summit that 
he and his organization in conjunction with Lippert, which is an amazing organization in Elkhart, Indiana, produce and put on annually and extended an invitation for me to attend and be a part of not only that event, but also have a spot on the author podium and have the opportunity to share Red Goldfish, with the book I co-authored with Stan Phelps in 2020, to people who would be in an attendance at this event. What makes the Purpose Summit unique and special and different from Cause Camp is the attendees of that event are actually for-profit businesses who are focused on something beyond profit. And so therefore, those organizations are perfectly in many ways aligned with the brand values of Social Good Promotions. So my attendance at that event gave me the opportunity to be able to spend time learning about other businesses that have a similar philosophy and approach to their work that we do and to really glean insights from the speakers and the keynote addresses and the breakouts about the ways that these businesses are approaching their work from a more tactical perspective so that maybe social good promotions could learn a thing or two in the process. It was held at the University of Notre Dame football stadium up in the top on the seventh floor, looking down on the field. The venue was just impeccable. The speaker lineup was amazing. And the connections that I was able to create as a result of my attendance in that event are really immeasurable from a value perspective. There's really, it's almost unquantifiable, but even more important to me was something that I was able to realize as a result of my attendance at both of these events. And it has a lot to do with a conversation that I had with my son, who, by the way, just graduated this past weekend and in the process closed the chapter on what has been just a tremendously successful hockey career. I'm incredibly grateful to him for having had the opportunity to be a witness to all of his journey and the highs and the lows and the twists and the turns that that took have been amongst some of the most amazing memories of my lifetime. And I am so incredibly blessed to have had a chance to be a part of it. And it's gonna be interesting to watch now as he closes that chapter of his life and begins what will be his professional career with maybe having to reimagine a little bit about who he is as a person and what defines him now that the cocky career is behind him. And I was reminded of the time that he was called up to play on the varsity program when he was in high school as a sophomore. He didn't have his driver's license yet, so I had to take him to practice because he didn't have a ride because he didn't really know or have personal relationships with any of the boys that were on the varsity team. So as we were driving the somewhat lengthy distance to get to practice, I could sense some anxiety, some nervousness off of my son. He's not a very emotional, outwardly emotional person. And the energy that I was catching off of him led me to believe and realize that there he had some nerves going on. So I was trying to think about how I could approach the conversation with him in a safe space that would give him the opportunity maybe to uh, dial down the anxiety a little bit and give him a chance to really go out there and, and see what he was made of. So I happened to suggest to him that really the sole objective that he should have during that skate was to see how well he could match up with the boys on the team from a pure skating perspective. Because in that sport, what many realize is if you can skate with the people that you're playing with and against, there's a very good opportunity for you to be able to be successful. And as I sent him into that rather lengthy practice and waited, I really wasn't sure what I was going to get when the practice had concluded. And when he walked out of the rink, he was practically levitating. And I was just so excited to see how lit up he was. And as he 
put his bag in the trunk and jumped in the in the vehicle and looked at me, it was obvious that I had a very confident young man on my hands as he proclaimed to me, dad, I can absolutely skate with these guys. And I think that I'm going to be able to contribute significantly to their success. Called up that year. They had tons of success. They actually played for the state championship that season. So he was able to capitalize on the opportunity. And really that catapulted him to what just began a, a lengthy and successful hockey career. And so I, in many ways, at the Purpose Summit, was faced with a similar sort of opportunity. You know, what was I simply there to learn? Was I, by virtue of my participation, really uh, only getting and not giving? And what I realized in the process of my interaction with the other authors, with Dr. Amber Selking from Lippert, who, oh my God, you have to follow Dr. Amber. She is a knockout powerhouse, energetic PhD of neuroscience that has developed this entire program that you can use to learn how to have a performance-based mindset. She's the uh, performance mindset coach for the University of Notre Dame football. She's got a book. She's got a podcast. Please, by all means, follow Dr. Amber. I cannot ex express to you how energized I was coming away from not only Dr. Amber's content, not only the other people that I was able to interact with as a part of my participation in this event, but I was armed with the motivation and the understanding of my own ability in comparison to these other leaders who are using a purpose-led approach. And what it's given me the confidence and the motivation to do is to make this pivot now to the thing that really does light me up, that brings the joy back to the content that I'm going to present to you, which is talking about what I talk about all day, every day at work, which is why purpose is such an amazing strategy for successful businesses, including my own, including Social Good Promotions. We've been able to realize really amazing success in the few years that we've been in business. And we think that it has largely to do with our focus on something beyond profit and our willingness to measure and study our impact on the communities in which we serve and the planet in which we live upon because our work, our purpose-led work leads us to trying to devise strategies for businesses that will elevate the perception of their brand in comparison to their competition in their marketplace. And in the process, diminishes the likelihood that the products that we're selling to our clients end up in the garbage. It's the most important thing we can do as a result of the work that we have sought to do at Social Good Promotions and our vision of having a sizable organization of employees from underserved communities is driven by our ability to be successful in that approach. And so I'm motivated we're closing the doors on the So You're In Sales podcast, not because we don't believe that the content is valuable, not because we don't want to continue to interview people every two weeks and bring that content to the people who are going to participate with what we do, but this is meant to reconnect our mission in life with the content that we're creating and tell you the stories of businesses using a purpose-led approach and focusing on something bigger than profit and being able to realize some really amazing results in the process. The Purpose Summit really catalyzed that for me and made me realize just how important it is that we hard pivot to telling these stories because it lights me up. I think you'll be inspired in the process. I know I am super excited to start sharing with you the guests that we're going to bring on to the new show which is titled the On Purpose Podcast. It's set to release June 1st. We have our first interview in the books. There's an amazing activation that goes along with this first podcast interview that we're going to release on the first. And I am so excited to share with you the ways that we're gonna, gonna continue the fundraising efforts that we started at Promo Cares behind 
uniting as an industry to fundraise for Save the Children, who are doing amazingly good work on the ground in Ukraine. We at Social Good Promotions are going to carry that message forward and we are gonna host our own fundraiser for the month of June. We're gonna talk to you all about it in the first episode of the On Purpose podcast. I am super excited. I don't know if you can tell, the energy is palpable. I feel like it's flowing through me. There's so many members of the Purpose Summit that would make for excellent guests on the program and I am going to be dogged in my determination in getting them onto this show telling their stories and inspiring others to use an objective that's focused on something bigger than profit to the benefit of your sales line, to the benefit of your employees, and maybe most importantly, to the benefit of the people that you do business with and the planet as a whole. You'll be happy, you'll be inspired, and I think you're going to want to share these new podcast episodes with as many people as you know, because if you're like me and you're lit up by the idea of working towards something that's bigger than just getting a paycheck, then you are going to be so thrilled with the interviews that we're going to have. So there you have it. I'm excited as can be. I don't see this as an end. I see it as an evolution. I'm so grateful to all of you who have been with me for these last five years. And there's been some great memories, don't get me wrong. I mean, you know, I I just, I have a couple that I wanna kind of talk about on my way out the door here. Uh, Amanda Delaney on July 21st of 2021 told me at the conclusion of her episode with me, hey buddy, that's gonna be the most listened to episode of your entire year. And by gosh, if she wasn't right, 416 listens later, Amanda Delaney, she called her shot. Congratulations, Amanda. That was awesome. And uh, what a great episode. If you've not listened to that one, you definitely should go check that one out. My man, Stan Phelps, my co-author on Red Goldfish Promo Edition. Stan helped me be an author. Thanks, Stan. I don't know that I would have been able to get that book out of me had it not been for your assistance. And Really, it's your willingness to make me do the work necessary to be seen as an expert in my field that gave me the confidence to even move forward with social good promotions and really has largely been the impetus around this content shift that you're going to witness now in the On Purpose podcast. So good on you, Stan, for doing that for me. Our relationship has been Great. I've enjoyed our collaborations and I look forward to the next thing that we do together. Kirby Hossaman and Bill Petrie, the promo upfront podcast duo who are coming up on episode 100 of their own program. You guys inspire me to be consistent with my content. And I'm so grateful to each of you for your willingness to have jumped in with me and recorded when I would call on you in a moment's notice in a panic and say, oh my God, I'm desperate for uh, somebody to come on and talk and you always delivered the goods every single time, both of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I can't thank you enough. And I know that you'll be supporters of this new piece of content and this new podcast that I'm gonna be doing because both of you have encouraged me in ways that you know and in ways you have not. So thank you both for that. And I look forward to seeing you interact with the new stuff. Paul Bellantone. And your well, willingness to take time out of his really busy schedule, either at his time as president at PPAI or as in his role at Halo now, you know, uh, getting you on the program and having you come on and talk to me about the year that was, especially in the time period that we reviewed the years that was. I mean, those are probably five of or four of the most crazy times in anybody's professional career. So your insights were always real interesting. And I think that those episodes will stand the test of time simply because the milestone markers that they were for the years that we had to endure. Wow, that was really something else. And maybe last but definitely not least, my good friend, Danny Rosen. Danny, if you think about it, Promo Cares was birthed in a So You're In Sales podcast episode, Social Good Promotions was birthed in a So You Are In Sales podcast episode. These monumental things that happened in my professional career and really in my life 
were directly the result of collaboration with you. And it was in this on this platform that we were able to bring these amazingly impactful things to life. And so for you, sir, I say thank you again from the bottom of my heart for your willingness to be a part of all of this craziness that has been what we've been doing. And the uh, So You're in Sales podcast is a better place and was a better show because of your participation and your willingness to lend me your ear and your voice and your feedback has been impeccable. I know you're going to be excited about the On Purpose podcast, and I know darn well that we have a program on partnership philanthropy that is probably tailor-made for this new vehicle that I've created. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure we'll be hearing from young Mr. Danny Rosen here very, very soon on the On Purpose podcast. Look for that on my social media channels. We will be promoting it when it's released here on June 1st. Until then, this is not goodbye. This is see you later. See you on the next thing. Thanks for everybody's willingness to support me after all of this time. We got this close to 30,000 listens. So I think maybe this last episode might just be the push that we get to say farewell and uh, walk out the door with 30,000 shows under our belt, 30,000 downloads. That's saying something. And I'm as proud as can be about the time that we've spent together. And I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed doing it, even though I lost a little bit of joy there for a while. But let's go. I'm super, super excited for the new thing. Take care, everybody. This is Roger signing off.